What is going on guys? It is Aldo here at Zero to Mastery and today I'm handing it over to Amber to talk about AWS exam scheduling and what to expect throughout the entire process of exam day. We all know exam day can be stressful as it is, so we want to make sure that you're as confident and prepared to ace that exam. And that's exactly where Amber comes in. Amber is a certified cloud practitioner, developer, and technical trainer with numerous years of experience, so you guys are definitely in some good hands. Enough talking from me, let me hand it over to Amber to get you guys started. Now let's talk through actually registering for the exam. Back on the main page for the certification, if you scroll down, you'll get some more information over here, the exam overview. You're going to get 90 total minutes to take it. It's 100 US dollars and you get 65 questions. We've already talked through the format there. The exam providers include Pearson View and PSI. They both offer testing globally and they both offer online proctoring as well, meaning you can take the exam at home, which is really nice. In-person testing centers are also available if you prefer that, and that information is available during the registration process. So let me just go through a few steps here to show you what this is like. We'll schedule an exam. This does require you to have an AWS training and certification account. If you don't have one, it's easy and free to set up. And once you have it, go ahead and sign in. I'll sign into mine. And then once you've signed in, actually go to the account. This will actually take you to certmetrics.com. So there's a few different sites involved here. But once you make it to this page, you can either come up to exam registration here on top or over on the right, register for an exam. And this will give you a list of the exams that you're eligible to take. Some exams have prerequisites. So if you haven't met a prerequisite, it wouldn't show up here on this list. But everything here on this list, you should be qualified to take. And everybody would be qualified to take Certified Cloud Practitioner. So on this list, it's the top row. And you would choose your preferred provider, either PSI or Pearson View. I've personally only ever taken tests with Pearson View, but you do have both of those options there. I'll just click on this. We won't go all the way through it, but as you go through, you're going to get questions like, do you want to take the exam at a testing center or take it online? If you have a private access code, you can enter that here as well. And it'll take you through a wizard to get to pick your date and your time. And eventually you'll check out and pay. Pretty straightforward. You'll also receive an email confirmation when you're done. As far as the cost of the exam, I mentioned it's hundred US dollars. But just as a quick heads up, if you've taken any other AWS exams, you can actually get 50% off the cost of this exam. So if we back up to certain metrics here, come up to the benefits tab. When you take an AWS exam, you usually get a voucher for your next exam. So if you've never taken an AWS exam, none of this would apply to you. But if you have, you'll see exam discounts down here for up to 50% off. So you would just need to claim the benefit, which will give you a code. You then take that code and as you're registering for Cloud Practitioner, at the end when it asks you to pay, you'll just paste that code in and you'll get 50% off. So pretty good deal. Even if you don't have that available now, after you take Cloud Practitioner, you should get this 50% off for another exam in the future. All right, you've been studying, you've done your practice questions, and the day has arrived to take the actual exam. Let's go through what to expect. And this will vary a little bit depending on whether you're taking it online or at a testing center. For online, you'll be required to check in 30 minutes prior to the exam. This will give you time to run a system test and check for things like video and audio, show your ID, and you'll also be required to show the proctor pictures and video of your surroundings. You'll receive specific rules and instructions about this, but generally they're things like nobody else can be in the room with you. You can't have a second monitor or another laptop next to you. You can't have your cell phone with you. You can't be wearing a watch, that kind of thing. So they do check all of that before you get started. It's always recommended to use a wired internet connection. If you get disconnected for some reason, maybe you're on Wi-Fi, you might not be able to resume the test and you'll have to start over. Most exams will have a digital scratch pad or whiteboard feature that lets you do rough calculations or think things through on paper. There really shouldn't be any questions that require math or diagrams or anything like that, but that's usually an option available to you. And then finally, you will be continuously monitored throughout the exam through your webcam. If you're taking the test in person at a testing center, once again, you'll want to arrive early. They'll check you in, have you show your ID, and then they ask you to place your personal belongings like cell phones and such in a locker or a secure area. They'll give you a scratch pad and a marker or pen so you can do calculations and think things through on paper. 
Again, probably not really required for Cloud Practitioner. You are required to give that back afterwards. And then you'll be monitored during the exam by a proctor at the testing center. Once you complete all the questions and usually a brief survey, you'll see whether you passed or failed, hopefully passed. You don't actually get your total score at that time though, it's just whether you passed or failed, and you'll actually never receive the answers or explanations to the questions. But within a few days, you should receive an email with your exam results. This will include your final score, something between 100 and 1000 points, and you'll also get a breakdown of how well you did per domain. It'll tell you whether you meet competencies for that domain or whether you need improvement. So again, you're not going to get any information on the specific questions that you missed or got right, but you might find out that you were really strong in one domain and weak in another, which can be good feedback as you continue your AWS studies and skills. And then in addition to the results, you'll also receive a digital badge that you can share on LinkedIn and other places, letting the world know that you're officially certified. Aldo here again. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're interested in getting certified, make sure to check out Amber's full AWS Cloud Practitioner Bootcamp course. Well, she'll dive into everything you need to know and even give you a 65 question mock-up exam that closely mirrors the one you'll be taking on test day. More information on that in the description below. But that's it for today and until next time. Oh, <laughs>